Support comes from the Missouri Forest Products Association, providing more than 41,000 jobs in the production of wood pallets, railroad ties, white oak barrels, hardwood floors, and more. Details at ChooseWood.com. It's Monday, January 8th. This is The Gateway. I'm Wayne Pratt. The founder of Community Arts Bus believes young St. Louisans need a creative outlet, like Gloria, a third grader who attends ballet class once a week. At least I have an opportunity to dance, learn new tricks, do tap and ballet. That's all I care. Coming up, St. Louis Public Radio's Lauren Brennecke takes a trip on the Community Arts Bus and explains how it helps families heal. Conservative critics of Missouri's Republican General Assembly leadership have organized a new group to support their agenda. St. Louis Public Radio's Jason Rosenbaum has more about the Missouri Freedom Caucus. The caucus includes House and Senate members who have openly clashed with GOP state legislative leadership, such as Senator Rick Bratton of Cass County. We want to advance liberty, freedom, the, the platform that we swore an oath to protect and defend. Bratton was part of the defunct conservative caucus, which often faced fierce pushback from Republicans and Democrats. But State Representative Justin Sparks of St. Louis County says the Freedom Caucus can find ways to make its mark. The purpose of the Freedom Caucus is to support our members in the Senate, get what they need to get done, and they will do the same for us. As of last Friday, there are more than a dozen members of the caucus. I'm Jason Rosenbaum, St. Louis Public Radio. Tests from late last month show Missouri wastewater contains very high levels of COVID-19. They are slightly lower in Illinois. The Centers for Disease Control conducts wastewater tests around the country to alert the public about any potential spike. SSM Health Chief Community Health Officer Dr. Alex Garza says the latest dominant variant is highly contagious. But does that mean more people are, are coming into the emergency department or getting admitted to the hospital? It, it doesn't have that high of a correlation as it had earlier when a lot of people were becoming sick enough to go to the hospital. Garza says getting vaccinated, testing, and treating symptoms are still the best ways to keep COVID-19 from spreading. Gas prices in the St. Louis region are down two cents a gallon over the past week. Gas Buddy's survey of nearly 1,000 stations shows the average price in the area is $2.85 a gallon. The national average is slightly more than $3.00. Prices in the Metro East run from $3.17 to $3.29. They range from around $2.50 a gallon to roughly $3 in the Quincy area, and they are close to $2.80 in Rolla. A new report suggests Illinois will not reach an interim goal of reducing runoff pollution across the state's waterways. Juan Pablo Ramirez Franco reports. Levels of pollution from sources like agricultural runoff are continuing to increase across Illinois rivers. Professor of Soil Science at the University of Illinois Urbana-Champaign Andrew Marginot says at the current pace, the state will miss its target to reduce two key pollutants by next year. We are not going to hit those milestones, especially for phosphorus in 2025. Pollutants, which are also known as nutrients, can also make their way into waterways as discharge from wastewater treatment facilities. And nutrient pollution can damage ecosystems and cause algal blooms, which are harmful to human health. I'm Juan Pablo Ramirez Franco. We should know this year how many people in Illinois prisons are taking college courses and the number who are waiting for access. State Representative Carol Ammons sponsored the new law requiring the state to collect the information. She says higher education programs dramatically reduce the chances of someone returning to prison. We should be trying to use education to solve our public safety issues. <laughs> Seems that way to me. The law went into effect January 1st. It will track enrollment numbers, demographics, waiting lists, and complaints by incarcerated students. The first Department of Corrections report is required to be online by September. Transportation departments in Missouri and Illinois are preparing to keep roads as clear as possible this winter. St. Louis Public Radio's Lucretia Wembley reports. After navigating a shortage of snowplow drivers last winter season, MoDOT says it hired at least 100 new workers. MoDOT District Maintenance Engineer Bob Becker says drivers have been trained and salt is plentiful. It's always 
nerve-wracking any of the first couple storms of the year, but we, we have done everything we can to be prepared for the snow. The Illinois Department of Transportation says it has more than 558,000 tons of salt ready to use due to a mild winter last year. Leaders urge drivers to move slowly and use caution while navigating icy roads. I'm Lucretia Wembley, St. Louis Public Radio. And a winter storm warning goes into effect this afternoon for the Quincy area. It lasts until midnight Tuesday night. Cold temperatures and gusty conditions are expected in the St. Louis area over the next couple of days. Some snow will be mixed in, but not much is expected to stay on the ground. A St. Louis nonprofit gives free arts classes to children in need. As St. Louis Public Radio's Lauren Brennicke reports, it's helping families find community and heal from violence. A student is picked up by a volunteer driver for dance class once a week. They make the trip to Central Studio near Forest Park to learn tap, ballet, and more. These classes and the rides there are free. Paige Walden is the founder of Community Arts Bus. It's part of a nonprofit that began as an arts festival. Walden organized the event while studying dance at Webster University. She says her view of St. Louis expanded beyond the college campus after her friend Rain Stippick survived eight shots to the torso. That's what I thought of as St. Louis. Yeah, I thought of Webster Grove as St. Louis because that's where it was. Everything kind of changed when my friend Rain was shot. It opened my eyes to what's going on in St. Louis. She didn't stop working after the festival. Walden felt compelled to help more people cope with the impacts of violence. She eventually partnered with Collective Motion, another arts-centered nonprofit, to form Community Arts STL. It really sparked me to learn and educate myself more about the violence in St. Louis beyond just rain. Um, so I was talking to FBI agents, I was talking to uh, community leaders, trauma surgeons. Eventually I got involved with the Violence Prevention Commission. She grew beyond just driving kids affected by trauma to her dance classes. Groups like the Violence Prevention Commission allowed the effort to host more drivers and teachers. Walden hasn't stepped back. She's still teaching classes at Central Studio and driving kids to and from them. Simply driving is, for a while it was an hour both ways. Because we're picking kids up in North City, uh, North County, sorry, and uh, I live in North City. So I'm going past my work all the way up to North County because that's where the need is. She drives to an elementary school in North County, picking up a kindergartner for ballet class. Walden offers her a snack and quickly goes on to the next stop. Are you buckled? Almost. Okay. Where Gloria, a third grader, joins the carpool. Walden takes the girls to the studio about 30 minutes away, and the girls tell her about their day at school. They're excited for their performance of the Nutcracker. We're gonna be dancing, dancing. Walden can only drive so many kids, and there's a limited number of volunteers. And when we are able to get a, a large force of volunteers, my dream is to have a partnership with the school, and that would be a lot easier to work with because all the kids will be from one place. She's one of eight drivers, also playing the part of recruiter, manager, and teacher, in addition to parenting her three-year-old son. Once they arrive at the studio, Walden will rush the girls in to get them changed, and then she'll begin teaching. Guys, when we get there, we have two minutes. Gloria, I'll have you escort Lauren in the class and have her meet Nicole, okay? I gotta run into my class. When they arrive, Walden goes straight into the classroom. Kids in ballet shoes surround her as warm-ups begin. While Walden teaches, Nicole Hunter works at a computer in front of the classroom. She's the hospitality administrator at Central Studio, and she volunteers with Community Arts Bus as well, driving kids to and from practice as needed. Just being a trusted adult in their life to ask them how the day of school was, which is simple, but it really matters for all ages in their development. Some of these volunteers have been working with these children for years. Walden says it's great seeing her students grow into role models. Gloria, for one, has grown out of her previous class. She's eager to show off her new trick. She'll be with the older students for this year's Nutcracker. At least I have an opportunity to dance, learn new tricks, do tap and ballet. That's all I care. Walden's preparing to find new volunteers during a recruitment event in the spring. They're looking for drivers and partners to expand their reach. I'm Lauren Brennicke, St. Louis Public Radio. Our Brian Moline edited that report. The Gateway is a production of St. Louis Public Radio, a listener-supported service of the University of Missouri-St. Louis. Music by Ryan McNeely of Adult Fur. I'm Wayne Pratt.
Support comes from the Missouri Forest Products Association. Missouri produces wood pallets, railroad ties, white oak barrels, hardwood floors, and more. Details on the variety of products made in the state are at ChooseWood.com.